Family, this is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. This is a proud moment that each and every one of you all should have the opportunity to witness and what we see here that is transpiring at our lovely uh, children's orphanage here in Tanzania. And that where the director made a promise to me that he would replace these white children's faces that had no business being in a, in my opinion, in the African orphanage when we have our lovely black children here. Lovely black children. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they should be on the walls instead of these Mzungu children who you see that our lovely babies need to have aspirations and inspirations of seeing themselves you know, when I first came out here, um, because I looked, I looked, um, I looked up orphanage and wanted to tie into and give to those who may not have, you know, these children, you know, ain't no parents and so they are being raised here basically. But um, we need to even understand that we were raised without parents, taken from this motherland, stolen, sold, out of this land that we were brought into a new land as orphans. And a lot of us, you know, who were unfortunate died along the way and those who made it had to figure out how to go ahead and survive. I won't go down that road of horror, but what I will say is today, it's a proud moment for me because of the fact that our God is changing. And as long as I'm being used as a vessel here in Africa, I'm gonna change the narrative. I'm not gonna sit back and, and go through each one of these countries and not provoke a mindset to change a mind, a belief, a thought that what they have been told from the Europeans that God is white, white is superior. I won't stand by that. And I don't care who gives me flack. Yes, I came into Africa I came like, like Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to call, bring the vision. I came to bring, Mumbo. Yeah. Right. I came to bring the vision. This is what Jesus said. I didn't come to bring peace. He come to tell the truth. Because the truth will set and make you free. To have an image on the wall that our lovely children will look up because they're small. But you think about this, they're looking up at pictures as a submissive state, as a place of like worship or praising those who are of other color and race is a mind game that's played. And I've said it once, I'll say it again, and I'll say it a thousand times. I will not zip my lip. Every time I see a white Jesus, every time I see, you know, something that's contrary to the truth, I am going to question it. And if I have anything to do with it, I am going to um, try to make change in it. I had to do a video on that, because, you know, uh, this is just one instance of where, you know, I've come into an environment and I've asked the questions. No difference when y'all saw me in the video and I stood right in the classrooms and said, Jesus ain't, that co ain't no color, it's a spirit. 
But we do know that if you want to talk about the flesh body of, 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 of Jesus or Emmanuel, as the scriptures say, by the, our prophet who said his name would be called Emmanuel, then, well, he was of color. Not long, not long hair, not blue eyes. This is facts. And if people would travel the world and go see for themselves, you're going to find that whether you go in South America, whether you go over in, in some of these other regions, even in the, some of the Europeans, as far as you can go up in Russia, you're going to find Jesus was black. But as time went on, the skin got lighter and lighter, of course. And now you find some countries are painting Jesus as their skin tone. And so this is something that I uh, want to show now. Let me get him back. Let me get over here and kind of show y'all uh, the place again, because this right here is an orphanage family. This is an orphanage. And this this place right here houses 64 children. And I've noticed that um, um, quite a bit, a few of them have uh, some mental disabilities. Uh, a couple have physical disabilities and that um, Uh, we know those things happen and exist in this world. And yet, um, those who may have those disabilities somehow, some way, should be taken care of. And so, you know, my part is that wherever I roam, I'm just going to try to give, you know, and that is it. I'm not here to, to, to I, can't, I can't be in all places at one time in the world, you know, but if I can just get a little bit just to help and a little means, hey, that's all it is. And so, you know, um, I, I thank, for the, thank you to you all who um, have been emailing me about wanting to give. Um, I say that, you know, I put the, I put the um, information of this charity or this um, orphanage on the last video of all the information. Um, I, I said that I don't know where the money is going when it goes to an account. There's an account number and everything associated with it. I don't know who gets a part of it. I don't know who... I don't know. I can't follow the money. All I can say is this right here. That money comes to my hands. I'm here to see and make sure that the job is going to be done. Now, I've already got him uh, doing an estimate on the ceilings because that was the main thing that, you know, some of these ceilings are in, in, uh, in need of repair. And so I'm going to get a contractor to give me an estimate. He said he's going to get a contractor um, and we're going to see where that number is and see that, you know, we're going to try to get it done right and as, as, as cheap as possible because I currently have from donations about $625 and that money's gonna go towards the ceilings. It's going right here towards the painting. So for those who gave, thank you very much. And those, those who are unable to give, thank you very much. It doesn't matter, you know, because God is gonna take care of what needs to be taken care of anyway. And so I don't want anybody to feel pressured. Don't want anybody, you know, I ain't gonna play that little game with some try to play on your emotions and stuff like that for you to give. No, this is a spirit of God that works on each and every individual's heart or who I'm wanting to give. But we're gonna make sure that I am here to make sure that the job's gonna be done, that every penny that is given is going directly to where it needs to be. And you ain't gonna never have to worry about me taking any of the money because number one, I got my own. Number two, I wouldn't dare, I wouldn't dare mess with our creator and being a thief to sit back and wait on the consequences thereof. No, that won't happen to me. I'm 54 years old, I already know how that is. My actions will be repaid, whether for good or bad. <laughs> so yes, so we have here family, we have here what's going on. I had got my brother John from um, Tinga Tinga, the art district. We were talking and all, and he was really sharing with me about, uh, you know, how the, um, 
things have kind of changed now because of COVID and, you know, a lot of artists in them, you know, have got to figure out different ways of making different ends meet or, you know, um, you know, other incomes, streams, streams of income that they can try to find to be able to do in order to, you know, live. And so we were just talking and stuff and uh, it had just popped in my mind that I didn't think of it until we were just talking and that, uh, man, I need somebody to paint them faces. So we talked and uh, we talked and everything. And so I was like, okay, give me a price. And we, we wind up coming with a price and now we're here. And uh, I'm not sure how some of you all feel about this, but I know that this is real. CC, lovely, ain't hey, no problem. Just, you know, I will put my cash app on there. You know, because I know if, if, people, if people give me uh, money through YouTube, they take uh, they take they take thirty percent. So I say, if you have the heart to give, don't even give through YouTube. They take thirty percent off the top. But I have the Cash App, so the, the Cash App. Or if you want, if you don't trust me and you want to give directly to them, they have a they have a bank account. Um, like I said, I can't guarantee where that money is going, who's going to get it, and where it's going to the project. I do know that because I'm here and the specifics of where we're going to be giving the money, I can supervise and ensure that it's going to be done. Now, you know, well, some of y'all might not know that when there are times that when, when we uh, give money to charities and nonprofit organizations, that money is, and it's, you, can do, you can also check too when you're giving your money to these nonprofit organizations, they'll tell you exactly where the money's going. They'll tell you how much of the percentage actually that you donate are going towards the cause. And so I'll give the cash app in a minute. You have to realize that that money goes towards overhead expenses, rightfully so. And, but I want to make sure that every penny goes towards the ceiling that he said that's desperately needed. And anything left over, we can, we can, we can talk about that, you know. But after that project, because we don't want, you know, the holes in the ceilings and the rain is about to come rainy season. You know, we don't we don't want them suffering with, you know, water on their heads. Um, but yeah, um, my cash app is the dollar sign W I G G I N N S R E A L T Y. That's Wiggins Realty. Dollar sign Wiggins Realty. Okay, I will post it in this right here. But um, we are going to. Um, um, I'll post it in the in the description, and I'll make sure that y'all have it. But in the other video that I have, I've posted uh, for those who want to directly. As I had a person said they want to do a monthly, and I said okay. So that information for here is um, the, the bank name, the, the account number, and all that is on the previous video. I'll make sure I'll put it in this video as well. Totally up to you how and who, where you want to give to you. Know, to you. you didn't get it. It's Wiggins Realty, W-I-G-G-I-N-N-S Realty, R-E-A-L-T-Y. So we have our children here in the morning right here and they're eating their breakfast we're seeing that, that i was just here and you get to see that uh, they've had their uh, they're eating breakfast and having their drinks and uh this is your breakfast yes what do you have what do you have for breakfast okay nice so they're drinking their juice. They're having their meals. Yeah. Beautiful children.
And so, family, um, what are they eating for breakfast? Looks like they're having, um, I like they're having some rolls, I guess, and some, some bread and some juice. You know, um, typically the lunch meals would be um, rice and beans. Um, typically they have starch foods and because starch foods is gonna keep, give you that energy and make you, la it's gonna last long, keep you from being hungry. And you know, typically, you know, if you're in orphanages and you're in places that, you know, uh, are in a state of charity, Starches are the main source of food. It ain't that lavish that we have like fruits and vegetables and all that there. It's typically rice. Yeah, no meat. No, 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 meat. You know how costly meat is? They, no, they don't even get meat. Do you know most Tanzanians don't have meat for like their dinner or lunch rather? Um, I'm not sure for the meal, but um, when I go to eat at the locals, uh, food stands and stuff, they have meat and there are some people who will buy meat, but there are most that don't because that's just added on price and it's costly. So starch is really big. I mean, uh, ugali is what they call with its maize made of corn. Um, to me, I call it grits that we're familiar with. And um, I call it grits, but um, ugali, rice, beans, um, they'll have, um, I love the, the greens that they have, really good. I think I even like them better than collard greens. Um, and then if there's meat, there'll be chicken, beef, or fish. But very few are gonna have on their plate meat. And if they do, it's a small portion. And so um, the staple food, even when I was, when I gave uh, to the children's school there in Kenya, you know, they, they said that, yeah, rice, we bought rice, beans, peas, um, flour, oil, because starches go a long way when it's in the body and it gives you energy because it's broken down, okay? If anybody knows anything about carbohydrates, carbohydrates, hydrate, blah, blah, blah. Carbohydrates is broken down all right, and it's turned into sugar, okay? It's turned into a, a, a glucose, which then gives you an energy, and then it's broken down further, and then it's stored as fat, which then even you also can utilize. This is what carbohydrates do. So you're gonna find in a lot of places, uh, even if you happen to be in a survival mode, you better have your starches. Meats ain't getting you nowhere. It can only sustain you for so long. If anybody's ever been on a, um, a carbohydrate-free diet, we used to call it the Atkins diet back in the day. I, I have done the Atkins diet for a many a year when I wanted to drop weight because if your body don't, don't have carbohydrates, your body begins to burn the fat off because it needs a source, a source of energy. And so meat only provides um, just a small little bit of, of, of carbohydrates that your body's not gonna be able to uh, land off of. So, I mean, operate off of whatever. And so, um, <clears throat> so you're gonna find a lot of starches. As you know, anytime they go into a lot of these places, these countries around the world that, you know, there's uprisings and people are left away, whatever, um, left out to on their own or they're moving through at a, at a uh, refugee camp and stuff, rice is the main source. That's what they're fed, rice. No vegetables, no fruits, no meats. So yeah, hopefully I answered that question because I know some people say, why is just that, you know? Because you're not, you know, we're used to three square and we're used to having a meat, a veggie, and a starch on our, on our plates. So yeah, but these are beautiful children. And guess what? You ain't seen not near one of them complaining. Now let that been up in America, some of our, our uh, children who may be used to certain ways and lifestyles, but no, this is gratitude and thankfulness. They're just eating, enjoying, and that is it. Yeah. You know, this morning uh, when we came in, the kids all surrounded the artist, John, 
And, you know, they were looking up at him. And, you know, I know they're like, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, go, what's going on? And, but, um, but now they seeing a change. They're seeing a beautiful change that is happening. And um, this right here is, is, I think, is probably one of the most beautiful sights. Una, hey, I'm going to ask you again. Yeah, um, so I'm trying to do my Swahili family. The, um, oh, so you, the Muslims speak pretty good English, right? You speak English. Yes, you do. You speak English. Yeah, you speak English. So, um, una ma, um, ma, marieta, huh? Una mayaka, imping, was it imping gapi? How old are you? Una mayaka, impinga, impinga, huh? Me gapi, me gapi. See, she's teaching me. Yeah. Yeah, twelve. <laughs> She's twelve. Okay, young man. Or I'ma say Luva. Is it Luva? Luvana. Luvana. No boy. How you say uh Luva Luvana? Mvlana. Mvlana. Yeah, there we go. Mvlana. Um Una miyaka, m m ping oh m gapi, ming gapi. I keep saying, I'm learning family. Eleven. Enzori, good, good. He's eleven. <laughs> yeah, my 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 Swahili. I, I <clears throat> you know, I'm learning little by little. And you know what's so funny? No matter who you ask, you're going to get different answers on how to say certain things. It's a hundred different greetings. <laughs> and I'm like, hold up, hold up. How do I? And there's different responses that they have. And so learning, you know, I'm like, okay, I just need the basics. I don't need to know the slangs. I don't need to know, you know, they got, if you're elder, older, younger, how you address. And I'm like, okay. I didn't know that. So, yeah, there's a dip, many different ways of speaking, um, depending on who you are and all. But, anyway. We um, are here, family, as promised, for you all to see this glorious... I don't... I, let me give me a chair here. I'm not sure, family. If any of you all know how powerful this situation is, you know, I don't know if y'all know the significance that is happening, the history that is happening here on a small but impactful picture to these children. What part of America did I come from? I've been all over America. I lived all over. I lived in 12 states. Yes, it's very powerful. This is a start of decolonization. Yeah. This is the start of unraveling the minds of the children. Look at me. These children are just coming around. They're looking and they're like, wow. This is going to unlock some, some, some thoughts and some mindsets. You want to directly help the people? I have information in the description and all that there. Amazing video quality for life. Good. See, God knows what God's doing. Make this clear, crystal clear of what's happening, what's transpiring at the, the Chakuwama. Welcome to Chakuwama, established in 1998. The woman was Tanzania, from what I was told. 
She uh, passed away two years ago. And now our director, I haven't seen him this morning, Mr. Hassan is one that um, is overseeing this facility, this orphanage. Okay, let me get to some questions here. Uh, I'm gonna turn around this way. All righty here. See if we can see what's going on, yeah. Thank you, thanks a lot uh, for your giving, uh, Cynthia. I just saw the, uh, your donation come in. Um, and I was just notified. Thank you for that giving. Guarantee you, money's gonna go directly to where it needs to go to. Okay, let me get right here, because y'all can look behind me. You'll see John's back there still painting the picture. And um, for those tuning in, yes, we are at the Children's Orphanage here. The Ch Chakumwama uh, Children's Orphanage. And we are making history of many a year here. There were white children on the wall in a African orphanage. And so uh, for those who's joined in, um, you get to be part of watching this. Um, let's see what some of y'all are saying. Yes, glad they are putting black faces on those drawings, yes. Can we chip in and repaint the whole wall? It, it could use some renovation. Hey, send, send, send the money, you know. Now you gotta understand that where you touch one wall, other walls need to be touched. And where other walls need to be touched, it's more of a cost. I think that, let me say this right here. We sometimes uh, are in a place to think that we're used to certain type of lifestyles, we're used to si certain type of accommodations. And painting a wall, painting the walls to make them look fresh, I mean, I get it, but it's not priority. Them ceilings in that building is definitely priority. Now, some people say, well, but you're painting the wall, the pictures, the face. Hold up, that right there is the number one priority, these faces. Why? These are causing an impact on the minds of our youth of having them feel inferior to a white race of people who they might think is superior. That is, that right there is the first and foremost thing that need to be done. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. And so, you know, I know, I know some, somebody had made mention to also that, you know, painting the walls and can we paint all that right there. The other day somebody made mention, yeah, send the money. Do you want that done? Send the money. But let me say this right here. Don't send it to me. Don't send me the money to me because my focus is getting the ceilings. Okay. We, he, that's what his request was, you know, because at first I was going to bring food and stuff, but that's not his request. You know, his request is he wants help with getting the ceilings. And to me, that is priority. All right, let's see what else we have to say here. How to donate. Um, I'll be having it in the description. I see you. <laughs> when I first came in, she gravitated to me. Beautiful young lady, little girl. Yes. It's our future right there. And she's so confident too. I mean, she's so she's so confident and I mean, definitely. What's up, buddy? Mumbo. Yeah. Yeah, you like to see yourself? Everybody's watching. Yeah. Beautiful kids. Now this these are these are our future. These these are our leaders. These are our revolutionaries. These are our ones who are going to spread truth. These are these our, our, you know, no, 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 don't touch, no touch. Uh -uh. Hapana, hapana. Um, these are our, this is our future. Look at him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 So, you know. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And, and so these children are not in school because they're not of age as of yet, you know. 
But they all want to be on the camera and the TV now. I mean, on the uh, film. My little. Yeah. My little. So. Where, where? Habana, Habana. Habana. Yeah. So, yeah, family, you know, the, um, the, uh, let me get back to your things here. Our future, our children, our, it's our future. And to have this on lock is a devastating thing. But as you see behind us, we have a historic move it, movement happening. And it starts with the little. It starts with the little, you know, family. And the little is renewing the mind. That's, that's in the scrolls. Continue to renew your mind so that you may prove what is good and acceptable to the creator or God, Allah, whatever name you want to say. But we do know uh, that when you renew the mindset that has been shackled by the oppressor, shh, ain't nothing can stop you. Ain't nothing can stop you. And so, and so, you know, like I said, for those who's joined in, everywhere I go in Africa that I see that is contrary to truth, I'm going to question it and I'll have a discussion. And when it comes to our youth, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> Mambo. Boy, you speak English? Yeah? Yeah? What's, come on over here. What's your name? Hussein. Hussein. Hussein, do you, do you stay here? Yes, yeah, here. You stay here, so you're one of the orphans? Yes. Are you? How old are you? Uh, 19. 19 years old. Yeah. How long have you been here? Uh, uh, and how many years? How, how, how old were you when you came uh, here? Seven years. So you was here, you was here seven years? Yes. Oh, okay. Did you get here when you were seven years old or you were seven years ago? Yes. Seven years ago. Oh, okay. What do you think about us changing the, 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 the color of the children to our skin color? What do you think about that? It's good. It, why is it good, you think? He's trying to read what's going on. Don't read what they, why do you think it's good? Don't worry about what they read, they're saying. Huh? Why do you, why do you think it's good? I don't, I don't uh, know what you say. Okay, so we're changing the pictures, right? To black children, you see? They're painting, right? There. Yes. Do you like that the children are black now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. Really good. It'd be good. Yeah. Why do you think it'd be good? Because it's you. It's yes. him, it's her, <laughs> it's them, it's all of us, right? Yes. Yes. So what are you, what are you doing? Um, you're 19 years old. Do you have work or are you gonna go to, to uh, yeah. higher education or? Yeah, I go to school. You go to school? Yes. Okay, okay. And what, uh, what do you wanna work? Uh, what job do you wanna do when you, you're gonna go to university or college or are you gonna, what do you wanna do? University. You're going to university. Yeah. What is it you wanna study? Uh, IT. IT. He wants to do information technology. Awesome. Do you know which school you'll go to? Yes. The Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. Oh, okay, okay. Kilimanjaro. So when will you start? When do you go to school? Kilimanjaro. You go right now? No, not right now. Yeah. We are in the holiday. Okay. Yeah, so we are going in uh, March. Oh, in March. You'll start in March. Yes. Nice. See, he's the future, right here. Information management or info, uh, IT rather, right? Yeah, it's information, information technology. technology. Yes. And so, this is the brilliant guy that we're going to see make a change and have a platform for all of Africa. Instead of Google, he's going to create. What are you going to create as a, a search engine? Computer. You're going to a computer. You're going to create another computer, different yes, computer, yes. a platform that we're going to have for the Africans. 
He's going to be the, he's the, he's the innovator that it's going to happen. See, I'm speaking that. You believe, you, you're the innovator for that, right? You believe. Yes. See, he's, he's going to be the next one that comes up with the greatest idea for the next generation for computers. Yes. He may be the first to be able to, to, uh, to create for um, the military, maybe an aircraft uh, or maybe weaponry to keep the enemies from coming in because they're coming in anyway. But, you know, he might be one that innovates, you know, the space shuttle that Africa doesn't have a space shuttle. He might be the one to engineer the computer side of that. Right. Yes. Yes. Anything is possible. Yes, I know. Anything is possible. Yes. So, what's your name? Hussein. That's right, Hussein. All right, I said Hussein. That's right. Hussein, who is 19. What's your name? My name is Nikomi. From USA, yo. Huh? I lived in the USA, but I'm from Africa. Okay. Yes, look, I'm from Africa. Yes. And so we, in America, we uh, are orphans too. Black Americans, we were orphans too. Yeah, all of us were orphans. You know, we were taken out of Africa. Did you know that history? Yes. Do they, did they teach y'all the history of the transatlantic slave trade? Did they teach y'all in school slaves in Africa that went to America? Do you know about that? Yes, I know. Oh, you know about that. Okay. And so us... Black Americans, if you will, that's because that's what y'all call us. We are orphans. We were taken from our families from Africa. We were taken and sold also uh, to the European that took us to America. Many of the children who went, many of the children who went, um, they didn't, their mom and dads were left behind, left here in Africa, and they were sold to go to America. Many of those women who were pregnant when they got to America, their babies were separated. They went, they sent their baby somewhere else and the mother somewhere else. When, 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 um, <clears throat> so there's many of, of the, us don't realize that we are orphans too. You know, there were many who came, who, who was enslaved, who were enslaved in, in America that when the people even um, who were married, and they had children. They would take their children and sell them to somebody else and send them away from their mom and dad. And so, yes, uh, uh, those who are around the globe or even in America's history, you have to understand that we are orphans. We were taken from mama land, motherland, the motherland, excuse me, the motherland of Africa. That many were uh, severed from a family unit sent on ships, fatherless, motherless, and all that. Kathy Miles, thank you for your giving. Uh, Jeffrey Roberts, thank you for your giving. Again, family, if you are giving because of a cause, um, this cause, whatever, um, you can give to the Cash app. Every, uh, because giving here on a super chat, 30% goes directly to YouTube, okay? And so, um, so I wanted to say that right there. And I have the link in the description as well. For those who are wanting to give monthly, um, please look at the previous video. I'll also put it in this video's description. But um, they have the bank account information. Uh, the orphanage name and everything that you can give if you're wanting to Hapana, Hapana. Um, no sometimes you know the little ones you got to teach but you know the um, the uh, so you know it's the giving and, and those those different ways if you want to give monthly and that uh, you can give directly to their or uh, their charity whatever that will be given what do you want? You trying to point at the screen? Huh? Do you want to look at yourself? <laughs> yeah. Very inquisitive minds. I love the children. They're very inquisitive, you know. Wanting to know, what is that? I want to touch that. See, he's trying to touch it. Yeah. And so, family, yeah. So let's check out the progress back here. Hey, there he is. 
Hey, my friend. Nice meeting. Oh, yes. Yes. Ah, oh, Santa Sana. Okay. Mumbo. Ah, oh, good. Zima. Yes. This is our friend right here, the director of the orphanage. He kept his promise and allowed us to change the painting on the wall. And um, the uh, this is a historical day. Yes, of course. Because I believe that the, the our, our, our beautiful children's minds now, instead of looking up to a European children reading books of knowledge and thinking that they are superior in the mindset and education, and then our children want to run to Europe or the Western world for education, they now can look up to themselves being educated, being the next future. So how's everything going? Uh, we are all fine. All are fine, all is fine. Yes. Now we know, um, we want to also, we want to uh, help in the area where you said the ceilings, the ceilings was your priority. Yes. Right. And um, so me and you talked yesterday about you getting, uh, finding someone to see how much it's gonna cost for the materials? Yes, I have already have information about the cost you, for... You have information already? Yeah, for ceiling okay. renovation. I hope I will give you the information okay. sure. already. Yeah, so I think that, that is a good, 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 good news to hear that you are ready to help these children live better life. Yes. Yeah, because you know the rooms still need the renovation during the rain season. Yeah, the roof it leans. Yes. So that we want to renovate it and then let them be happy, live good yes. life. Now, um, and so also did they do also the girls' room as well? Did they give a price on the girls' ceiling? Yeah, I have already uh, have both price for boys and the girls' cemetery. Oh, you do both. Of, you have the price for both. Yes. So okay. Uh, okay. Later, later on, I will give you the the price. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then I will be bringing a person here to also give a price. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I do that, you know, I typically, you know, you do three because you want to make sure that the first one they ain't overcharging you. Okay. The second one's going to come in and yeah. when they know that you got somebody who's already gave an offer, they're going to be like, okay, they're going to try to give you a reasonable price. And then when you bring the third one in, you say, okay, you're the third one. We want you to give us a price to fix it all. Then they know that there are two other bids ahead of them and they know that they got to, if they want the job, it's going to give you even probably a close to reasonable price. Okay. This is why I said that I want to also bring somebody in. Okay. You know. Yeah, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, oh, it's okay. So we are waiting to see the man. Okay. Yeah, so we have already have our list. Yeah, the material which are needed to renovate it and the price. So let us see from the other people. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, um, so we are, we're hopefully we're going to do that. Um, and there was people who contacted me. There was a gentleman, and I'm not sure how sincere he was, but he said that he wanted to take care of the girl ceiling his, himself. Oh, that's good news. And so um, I had provided him the information. I don't know if he's reached out to you or not, but um, I can go and look through my emails to see if I can... Um, respond back to him and see, but that's what he said, oh, you know. That's, but that's, uh, that's good news to hear from yeah. you. Yeah, uh, you know we have a big job to take care for these young yeah. children. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes we need people who can assist us. Yeah, looking for these young. Children. Yeah, the young children. Yeah. Yeah. So you can look. It's not easy to run. The orphanage. If you don't have any any support from right, yeah, other people, yeah. So for us, it is a good news to hear from you that there are people who want to come and uh, help out. Yes, help out. Yeah, yeah. Now I know. Last time we talked, you said you have some places that help donate food and stuff like that. Yes, there yeah. are people coming here to donate food. As you see here, we have. Food like rice, yeah, cooking oil, yeah, yeah. So it helps us, yeah, yeah. You know the children, 
they have the basic needs like the food, the shelter, clothing, healthcare. Yes. But if they don't get food, they don't get food. They don't live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Now let me ask you this right here. Somebody asked a question. I want you to answer this. Do the children eat meat? Yes. Do they, they they do. They do. Yes. But not often. Yeah. Uh, Often. Often? Okay. Yeah. Often people are bringing here meat, sometimes goat. Sometimes goat and stuff. So people would donate meat to here for the kids they have. Yes. Because I was sharing with them that sometimes meat is expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, but here people are just bring them free. Yeah. Yeah, we don't go to the butcher to buy. Yeah, you, you, people yeah, donate. People donate. Yes. So they, they eat meat. They do eat okay. meat. So they do eat meat because when we were seeing the children eating for breakfast, you know, and they were eating just bread. And I said, well, bread is a source of energy. And so that energy can hold you a long while, yes. you know, just like beans, rice, you know, those are starch foods. Yes. And I know that in the typical, uh, from what I was told, that's what I was told that most Tanzanians will eat, if, if they're gonna eat meat, they eat a little meat because meat is expensive if you eat at some of the yes, restaurants. Yes, it's expensive. Economically, uh, most of Tanzania, they cannot afford to buy meat. They just eat beans and other vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. That is expensive. But for us, we thank people that they donate yeah. meat. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes they eat beans and the vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay then. So we'll we'll get together here. I'm gonna finish up this video. We're gonna keep continue to check on this progress of our beautiful black children on the wall, as well as our beautiful black children here live. Um, that you can see how children just love to have fun. You know. That's one thing that I like is that you know you can tell. When, when you can tell when children are in a good place, when they smile, laugh, and they run, um, you know, and I can tell that these children are in a good place. Yeah, you can see the environment here. Yeah, yeah it's the fact that our orphanage center is not big, just a small orphanage center, but we make sure that they live better life as other children do. Uh, you find that here our children, some of them, they don't have parents, but we try to give them a better life so yes. that they can enjoy as other children do at the, their family. So you see them playing, yeah. they are happy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's a good thing to see children happy. You know, I used to say um, when my children were small, I used to love hearing them sing in their bedrooms. A singing child is a happy child. And I would hear them sing back there, you know, some, some songs or whatever. And I'm like, we're raising them in a good house. Yeah, you know? thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, let me say thank you to all people who are ready to assist these children and then make them be happy and enjoy their life. Yeah, speak you will find that if a child lost a parent, he's sad, always sad, but we can make them be happy. Yeah. Yeah, if we give them better life and give them the basic needs, yeah, they can play. Yeah, so everybody has responsibility to make sure that these children are growing up. Yeah. Yeah, and we must give them education, health care, so that they can survive. Yes. Couldn't say it better myself, you know, family. I mean, we're talking about our future. You know that, you know, we know, we know how America is and what's going on in the, the black culture uh, in America with our inner city that is definitely in despair and, uh, and, and definitely in need. And so, um, you know, mental health is an important thing that still has not been addressed in the black community because of years and hundreds of years of suffering mentally. And so um, we have to keep that in mind that uh, to raise a child, to make sure that they're mentally 
okay and stable. This is all mental right here. That right there, them two little black children on the wall is a mental state. Thank you very much. Um, Bado, was that ba Bado Kijani? Thank you for your giving. Um, so, so the um, it's a mental state, and your mind ain't right, all is lost. And so we want to thank John for the hard work that he has been doing. How long you been here at this orphanage? Yeah, for all twenty-two years. Twenty-two years. Yeah, it's okay. Still there on the wall. We that the year 1998. You was here in the, during the time it started? Yes, since 1998 I was here. So I have 22 years. 22 years? Yeah, at that time I was still a young boy. So yeah. Now... You was a young boy 22 years ago. Let me ask you this right here. How did you find yourself partaking in an orphanage? How did you be, got involved in this? Yeah, I remember my mother. My mother is the one who was established this orphanage. Oh, it was your mother who established this. Yes, so who I, passed away two years ago. Yes, two years ago. Sir. Okay, see, so you didn't say it was your mother. She was your mother. Okay, yeah, I was thinking somebody she was else. My mother. Oh. So I was working together with him, with her. Yeah. Yeah, and there I was just assisting her. I was the deputy. Deputy Executive Secretary. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember he used to tell me that when she was a young girl, yeah, yeah, her parents did this job. They were collecting children oh. from the street and they yeah, raised them at the family. Yeah. Yeah, and they give them the, the basic needs. Yeah. So she was growing with those children. Yeah. Yeah. And so later on, when she started her life, she decided to establish the orphanage center and uh, collect those children who have got challenges. Yeah. And they try to give them. Yeah. yeah, basic needs. Wow, so in other words, what I'm hearing is this is just in y'all spirit to give and help out the, 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 the children without parents, or those who are in need. This is just something that is in yours, y'all spirit. Just giving people. Wow. You know, in the scrolls it says that for those who take care of these little ones, you know, those who take care of those little ones are the blessed ones and will be heavily rewarded, you know. And so, you know, your reward oh, thank you. is going to be definitely rewarded. You know, you, your reward is huge in the kingdom of God. You know what I mean? Huge. Thank you. Huge. Thank you. Huge. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you. But it also says that for those who mistreat any of these little ones, Woe unto him. That's what it says in scrolls. For those who mistreat God's little ones, woe unto him. <laughs> and that woe, you need to check out, family. What does that woe mean? <laughs> you go on abusing children. Yeah, you go in and taking advantage of children. Yeah. So anyway, but we appreciate you and all that right there, allowing us to come here to help out, allowing us to come film and just to share your story of what you all got going on. So I'm gonna go over here real quick and we're gonna look at the update where we are on this painting, okay? All right, hold one second. All righty here, Mr. John. How are we doing today? You're doing a great job. And so, John, we talked yesterday because, you know, you're the painter. You can go ahead and talk. You don't have to look at this way if you don't have to. You go ahead and continue your work. I don't want to interrupt you, you know, on this great, this great uh, artwork that you're doing. Um, you, you, um, how long have you been painting at uh, Tinga Tinga? 
More than 20 years. Okay, more than 20 years. Okay, and um, I met you at a, a, the place that you have some of your artwork and stuff. And uh, you were sharing with me that uh, some of the artists and, well, most of the artists right here are feeling the effects of COVID. And um, how is it? How is it for an artist that, uh, you, you know, y'all had relied on COVID, I mean, excuse me, the tourists. The tourists were probably most of, probably the main, uh, your main customers, right? Yeah. And I asked you, okay, now that COVID has happened, tourists aren't coming, what are you gonna do? And what was your, what, what was your answer? Okay, you gotta speak up, because they ain't gonna hear you. Yeah, because of COVID. Yeah. This year also, same thing happened again, so I have to, Find anything to do. I've, uh, I'm a driver, so I can drive a car or any job. I can't because painting now very difficult. Yeah. Because of COVID. Yes. Yeah. And y'all know me, family. That um, my mom was just thinking, and I told him, you know, about the um, the auction idea. Uh, you know, I'm having a, a website made too. Maybe getting their paintings on the website so that people can order and then they still can make money because a lot of them just ain't got the websites and stuff. And, um, and I was like, you know, this is the time now to get on board. And so, you know, get on board so that um, technology is here and we got to utilize it for what it's worth. And if you don't, then you are standing on your own desert island while the rest of the world is connected, you know? And so we, uh, we, we, uh, are going to try to also, you know, think of some ideas, man, and how we can help our, our, our artists and other people. It's just you know, all this, and we are creative people, and we, there's many ideas that we can do, you know. This is one that I was like, okay, all right, I need a, I need a, a wall painted, um, and I'm going to tell you this right here. What I, when I was over in Nairobi, John, and you can, you can continue painting, I was over in Nairobi, I loved the beautiful murals that they have on the building. The artists paint on buildings, these big murals. And, you know, I think it would be great even, that's just another uh, idea of finding business owners uh, who um, would want paintings on their walls. You know, murals on their walls. Um, and so there's a thousand different ideas where artwork has come involved, a thousand different ideas, you know. But yeah, these are just, you know, some things that I don't know, with me, with me, my mind goes a thousand miles an hour. And I continue to try to think of ways and innovative ways of trying to, you know, um, do things differently, you know. And uh, coronavirus, the corona pandemic definitely has um, had me, had me rather, had me thinking, you know, what would I do right now if I was working and I had to find another means? Let me turn back to the, let me turn back to the, uh, our beautiful children on the wall. Um, what would I do? What would you do during COVID? Many people lost jobs. Many people aren't making any money. And it's, and it's stretching you. Oh, you like the hairstyle. Yeah. Okay. But it's stretching people. And it should stretch you. It should force you out of your comfortability. It should stretch you to a point of where it's going to make you think of different ways. It's going to stretch you to where, you know, hopefully fear sets in. To where you're able to finally got to go do what you have to go do whether it's your goal, your dream, your aspiration. Look at this young, the, the little baby, this beautiful boy. Look at this beautiful boy. Hey. How are you, Mumbo? He said, boy, he's fine. I said, Mumbo, he said, boy. It means fine. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Um, let me see what y'all saying here. You will get best sleep tonight. Yeah, you know. Huh? Yeah, the art's coming along good already, yo. 
we ain't even got we we ain't even got to put eyes and ears and everything on it. All we had to do was just put over the face. <laughs> we ain't had to put no hair and all. We just all all we had to do was just black it out. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else y'all got here. Um, great job, John. They're saying great job. Yeah. Beautiful art on the wall. Looks great. Like the hairstyle. Put it Malcolm X picture. Nah, we don't want Malcolm X picture. We want these children's picture. People don't know no Malcolm X. We want them, we want them and much respect to Malcolm X. But what I'm saying is, what, am I, what I'm saying, um, Abderon Rahman, is that um, we so focus on other people who's dead instead of focused on the now. We are the living. The dead is gone. These children are the future. You know, and so when they can see themselves on the wall, reading a book, becoming the greatest minds, creators, the inventor, invaders, I, mean, I keep saying invaders, innovators, this is what they need to see. We need to remove our mindset now from the, our ancestors did a great job and we should never forget. But you know what? We need to start living in the now. We need to now start, as the people like to say, give flowers to those who are living doing great work, not to those who are dead. They gone. It's amazing that look, look I got a little, a little, I guess, uh, I got a little uh, touchy on that, I guess, right there. Let me calm down a little bit. But really, what I'm saying, family. Those who have our ancestors have done great jobs. It is amazing that when people die, they generate more money than they were alive. Thank you, Andrew, for those flowers you've given me. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. When people die, they make more money when they're dead. How is that? It's back to what I was saying was that back to what I was saying we don't appreciate each other when we're living here's something for you this is in the scrolls for the creator God said this right here I am the God of the for the living not for the dead now that goes both ways there are dead men walking right now who are alive they're dead. You also have, um, it's also said, when the man ran up to Jesus and said, Lord, I can't follow you. I can't, I'm not unable to go. I'm, una, I'm una, unable to go. One of his disciples said this, un, I'm unable to go. For my dad had passed away and I need to tend to uh, Tend to the necessary things that I need to do. Now, you would have thought now. Jesus would have responded differently than what he said on this. This is what Jesus said. The spirit of God. Now, just keep this in mind. Let's not go into your mindset of a color. This is what the spirit of God said. Let the dead bury the dead. What you going to do over there? Let the dead bury the dead. And so. The, um, <laughs> so we have to appreciate what's going on now for the future. Our kids need to look up to the creator through us who is living. The only way they're going to be able to see God is through those who are living. Not no Malcolm X on the wall. For his work was done back then for those who were living. When he died, the movement, the, the, the spirit of God had to go forward and continue. The children needs to look up to the creator that is within us. And that are those who are the living. See, this painting right here, what I like about it is it's nameless. But it's infinite. It's youth. It's the future. It has a much meaning on it. That means this is continual. It's infinite. Have we put a, one of our ancestors on the wall? It's over. It's done. 
Yes, we can learn and, and, and get educated on it. But what is that saying? This right here is telling the youth, this is you right here, studying, broadening your mind, opening up those portals to, to, to be able to become the brilliant spiritual beings that you have, that you have, that you are. Shola, thank you for your giving. We appreciate you, brother. Let's celebrate life while we are here. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, there's, there's a place for our ancestors. Yes, there's a place for our ancestors. But these kids at the orphanage, no mamas and daddies, <clears throat> they need to see themselves right there, right there. Beautiful black power picture on the wall. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Great. Is the orphanage in Dar es Salaam, what neighborhood? Yes, this is over in um, Mwenge. Mwenge is in Dar es Salaam outside of the city, but Mwenge is the area of where this is kind of located at. I think it's Mwenge. Yeah. So, um, true. A lot of them don't know about black American leaders. They don't. I understand what he was saying, though. I mean, you know, I understand what my man was saying. But, uh, yeah. Yep, it's a reflection of who they become. That's exactly right. Because if we can get our children to, look, if we can get our children to read, they don't come across the ancestors. They might read about Malcolm X. If, they don't, if we don't impress, uh, uh, press upon our youth, that y'all need to go ahead and ed get educated on some things that are going on around the world. Some things that, you know, those who were before us and those currently right now, you can get more empowered by information. Yeah. Okay, your mom lives in Mwenge. Okay, nice. Uh, let's see what else y'all saying. Thank you, Mr. Go Black. We need that message. Thank you, Yusuf. Yeah. Uh, Bar Mardo. Yeah. They died, but left to us a lesson to learn. And Malcolm X, yes, he deserves. But Julius uh, Inyere, Inyare, I can never say that, is deserving even more since he made their country all foundations. Everybody's hands in the pot. There's not one that is greater than another. Nobody deserves anything greater than another while we're here on this earth. All are recognized for those who put their hands to plow, whether you're pushing or pulling, take all exact, uh, takes the credit equally. And though I know we, uh, have our likes of our, those that impress upon us. I even say, you know, hey, there are those, some of those who impress upon me um, more than others. It's only because I understand that I was at that place at that moment into where my mindset was in their place. And, but as time goes on, it will eventually wind up in the person's place or this other person's place as you grow. So yeah, it's all good. Look at the pictures behind me. It's coming along. Yeah, uh, would you say uh, Supreme Fire 31? I knew this was Tanzania. I can't wait to visit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't matter what, no matter, it doesn't matter what country you go to or where you might be at. There are always people in need. There are orphans all around us. There are people hungry around us. There's people who need clothing and shelter, you know? And so I even say that, hey, you can go out your back door. And I'm quite sure if you don't, if you walk or drive, you don't have to drive too far to find somebody in need. Uh, let's see, what else we have? What we don't know about, we can teach and learn. Okay, I don't understand that one. I have tons of art, paint, okay. Greetings, family. 
How can we provide, how can we help the orphanage? Uh, there again, like I said, um, there's several ways. One way is that the orphanage has provided me the information. Uh, if you want to give uh, to their, um, they got a bank, that if you want to donate money to the bank under the orphanage name, you can do that. Um, for those who want to do that sidebar, uh, but for what I'm doing, um, I'm a, I have a totally different take of mine. You know, you know, he requested, you know, for the ceilings. So we're going to make sure that these ceilings are going to be taken care of, you know, because the rainy season coming and that's what his, his desire is. And so um, I'm asking that, uh, or I asked him that uh, depending on the donations given, depends on the cost of the project, uh, we'll see what we can do. But... You know, I'm sharing with you all is that number one, don't give through the super chat here because that's 30% that's going to be taken out. But, um, you know, that's if y'all want to just super chat me. But the far as donations concerned, um, I'll provide in the description of the orphanage, <laughs> the orphanage. And um, and then as far as when it comes to uh, I have a cash app money that's donated. I'm still sitting on $625, y'all, that y'all have donated when I was over in um, Kenya. And then I had to leave because that money was going to go towards trying to help out the kids' uniforms and stuff, which I ran into roadblocks there. I still haven't uploaded, uploaded the video, but um, I just didn't know how hard it was trying to get kids into school. And, you know, especially when you're talking about kids who live on the street or living out by themselves without moms and dads. So, you know, one of the requirements they wanted is for, to have a representative for, who can answer for these kids. When these kids might act up in school, they need a parental, uh, a parental guidance. And I was not going to be there in Kenya. And so I ran across. So I have 600 still, $625 still that is uh, going to be going towards the roof here. And for those, like I said, who wants to go make sure that this project that he requested for the roof is going to flow through my hands directly to his hands and I will be overseeing the project. It's just how I like to do business. I like to see that my money going into the right hands and making sure the project gets done. Um, there again, rightfully so. It's just more than just, uh, if you donated your money, your money might not go directly to what you might want it to go to. It might go towards expenses, you know, paying the bills on some of these cars, maybe for gasoline or paying some of the salaries for the staff and make for uh, electric bill, water bill. It might go towards, so the money is going to be dispersed however they see fit, but to ensure that this need is going to be uh, taken care of, um, I would be able to be here, be able to see and make sure that, hey, this money that has been given is going directly to that project. Does the orphanage have water? I want to help with that. Yes, they have water. They got water. They have all the needs, the basic needs that you need. They got electric, water. Um, they cook the food here. And, um, yeah, so um, look at the last video I did. I walked through each one of the places. I gave a tour of the, uh, they gave me a tour of the place. So you are able to see, um, see that. Books, uh, do they need books? I'm not sure if they need books or not. Um, I can ask those questions. Say, so, yeah, um, I agree with you right on point. That's the right way to do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, being a businessman, sometimes, you know, you got to overwatch projects because, you know, we have a tendency as people to do other things. And when we say we want to get something done, you find something else that you that you find that you switch your priority and wanting to do. You know how it is. People tell you that they need to borrow money from you because they need to go ahead and take care of this. And as soon as they get the money, they don't use the money for something else. Is there any schools that teach any kind of trade? Yes, many of schools out here that teach trade. Many of schools. College, universities are out here. Yes, we can easily get sidetracked. You know, we can easily get sidetracked. But that's where you have a project manager. The project manager is one who's to oversee the project to ensure that it stays on schedule. I did project management in military too as well. Taj, thank you very much for your giving. Great job, my brother. I actually confronted my son's daycare for having pictures of white children in their curriculum when 99.9% .9 of the children in the schools were black. It didn't change, and we now 
homeschool him. See, that's a powerful move you did because you knew that the impact of what that image would have on your child would be everlasting. We don't understand that, that the impressionable minds of a youth Mine is totally, it's, it's continually growing. And it, it's the cells are in the, the, the cells and all that are creating to the nerves are connecting and they're building and creating a character, a belief, a view, a perspective. And everything that child is exposed to is going to create who they are. This is why in the scrolls, it talks about when Jesus says one needs to be reborn. In order for one to be reborn, you got to go ahead and change this because your mindset is so filled of what they taught you in your environment. The preacher man is telling you that, you know, hey, in order you got to be saved. In order to be saved, you got to, in order to go to heaven, you got to be saved. See, that whole message there is wrong. Believe me, I was a minister. Two times about to become a pastor. I know that word in and out. I understand the spiritual teachings of it, not the black ink on it, which a lot of people only teach in the black ink because there is no spirit within them. And so, yes, in order to renew your mind, to be saved, you got to come from out among the people of that old stinking thinking, them old schools of thoughts that you believe is supposed to be true. When the Christ, the spirit said, Unless you born, reborn again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This is what one of the people said. I know that joker. I know that scriptures. <laughs> I, oh, man, I was in and out of that joker for years. But I'm thankful for it because it, I understand it. One asks, how can we enter the kingdom of heaven? This was a serious question that was posed to the Spirit of God. Yeshua, or Jesus, as they say in an English language, Yeshua, all right? The salvation, the, sa the Savior. Every word that came out of his mouth, like he said, everything I say comes from the Father. Everything I do comes from the Father. And he was trying to tell the people that Spirit that is in this body here is what I speak from, not this but the core, the heart. And so when the, they asked him, you know, you know, he, he told the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, these religious folk, y'all hinder the people from entering into the kingdom of heaven. When yourselves aren't even going, even yourselves are not even going into the kingdom of heaven. People are like, how do you get into the kingdom of heaven? What is he talking about? Until you renew your mind and come from out of this world system of believing your own beliefs and opinions and views and all that right there and like to argue about, no, it's not, this is what it is and all that right there and come to a kingdom thinking, love, peace, putting one's life before oneself. How do we enter into the kingdom? Uh, humble yourself. And have a heart for others. Humble yourself. You're not greater than nobody else. And nobody's greater than you. And to submit under the authority of the spirit. So the spirit can guide you. You know, this ain't me doing this. Go black then come up. There. This was God to show me in my spirit. Some people say, how did God... How did God tell you to change the color of a picture? Why would God tell you to do that? God did it before. God did it before. Reading the scriptures. The children of Israel, when they came out of supposedly Egypt, they had brought with them some memorabilia, images of things that were not satisfying to the Lord. And these people had to get rid of that stuff because the images was putting an imprint on their mindset of who, of, of what was contrary to the kingdom things. And when you hold on to these, these things, it hinders you.
So let's look at the picture again here. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't went into that 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 teaching preaching mode. Oh, John, you're writing something. What are you writing? What does that mean? Huh? To read. Okay, and then I want you to put over here. I want you to put over here. You you are the future. No, in, in, in Swahili. Put it in Swahili. And I don't put it in no English. Nah, we in, we in Africa, brother. We ain't putting nothing in no English. We putting in Swahili. You are the future. Now, I'm not going to bring no Western mindset in Africa. Now, some people going to say, because like, I've already been having, the, you know, the haters come out and say, oh, he going over there with that Western mindset, going over there, changing up stuff, causing havoc and causing all these issues and, and problems and stuff. Well, no. Number one, I'm not coming up here changing anything that is not of Africa, that's African. I'm coming up changing up was European. <laughs> that's what I'm coming to change up. I ain't trying to change up no, no African. That's what my man John just said. Oh, you want to put it in English? Hex, no, I don't put that in English. You put it in Swahili. We're in Africa. I'll be daggone. You're going to put some up in some daggone English. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, John, appreciate that. Put over here, put I am the future. Okay? Instead of you are the future, put I am the future. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. We can do that. Ellie. Yeah, we're going to do that. I am the future. See? It ain't about me. <laughs> it ain't about me. It's about we. It's about we. And so, you know, so these people, they think that, uh, you know, oh, he went into the schools and he talked about, you know, uh, telling the kids that Jesus is not a color and how dare him. You got that right because the white man came in and told our children that Jesus was white. And I already know the scriptures. Jesus is a spirit. It is no color. And what the first commandment was from the, from the creator. Do not make any graven images of the things in the heaven, things in the earth, and the things beneath the sea. For you shall not bow down to them. See, we want to make, we want to make images of Jesus. That's totally against the grain. You can't make an image of a spirit. It's an impossibility. Well, some have attempted to go ahead and make this little aura, you know, with the light and the shining of a spirit and all that. It's an impossibility. This is a European concept. I am not going to be held accountable when I know the spirit is sharing with me to unlock the corruption of the mind from the from a from an enemy. Um, and that the creator is showing me right there. That is against what is being taught in the kingdom of things. The kingdom of things is spiritual things. <laughs> it's spiritual things. That's why this image right here ain't to be worshipped. This is a spiritual message. That's going to touch and strike the spirit. Well, if God's the spirit. God, God wouldn't be using anything else. But, oh, no. God used, God used things to show people as reminders. God used the scorpion, told, told the children of Israel, put that serpent, uh, or that scorpion, on the, st on the stick and put it in the center of the camp of your people to remind them what I've done for them. Save them from being destroyed by these scorpions. <laughs> yeah, I know. I ain't going to bother with the losers, you know. But, uh, hey, I'm letting y'all know. You know what I'm saying? 
Will you smoke good? Hey, hey, Jesus never existed, but okay, we support you anyway without any of the rubbish. Don't say we support you anyway. You support me. And you who smoke bud, you don't know what you talk about. You don't understand. You missed the whole point of who Jesus is. Will you smoke good bud? I understand already why you say you don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> I can understand it. I'm not out trying to beat you up, but you just came at me now with a response. We under, we, we, no, don't put nobody else in here that, uh, uh, okay, we support you anyway. No, stick it with you, because that's your message right there. Rubbish. You know, I'll say, okay, so, uh, and I know I've seen you on here several times before. My thing is that, hey, Will, I'll put this right here. Before I put you in timeout, all right? This is my channel. And if you don't like it, you can go. All right? This is my channel. So I ask you to zip it. All right? You can zip it and just remain quiet in your belief system and watch what's happening going on. Whether you like it or not, what I say, it's no need for you to comment. So my thing is that yeah, hold your belief. Because I'm going to tell you right here, I know you believe and there's a difference. <laughs> I know there's a Christ, a Yeshua Christ for a fact. Now you don't have to with your rubbish. That's okay. This ain't for the non-believers on this channel. This is for those who, if they don't believe, can sit back in quietness. They can go ahead and chill. But for those who do, you can amen respond to it all day long. No need for the, no need for the, uh, those, those right there who wants to disagree. Disagree in silence. All right. Isn't that coming along, family? That the, the pictures, yeah. Yeah. I, like, I used to say this right here to my troops when I was in the military. Because many of them weren't believers. You know, believers in the, in, in the Almighty. They weren't. And, you know, they had to come see me when they got themselves in trouble and stuff. And I share, you know, a word with them, you know. And if anybody even, and if anybody, uh, if anybody even read into the scrolls, it's powerful words. You got, there's almost a lot of it that you just can't even dispute. Like, this is, this is totally, you know, kingdom bound. It's kingdom sent, you know. But my thing is this right here. I used to tell my troops right who got in trouble, right, that, okay, and they would tell me, Sarge, you know, I don't believe in no God. I don't believe in all that right there. And I would tell them, you don't have to, dude. But it's mighty funny that the trouble that you keep seeing, I keep seeing you when you're getting in trouble, then who then you do believe in? Because you coming in my office in trouble and you, you asking for forgiveness, you asking to go lightly on your punishment and all that right there, the only one that can do that is the one that I believe in. Now, are you wanting me to go ahead and move outside of what I believe and then get on your, on your board, on, on where you are? And I'm going to punish you severely because that's the way the world is. The world is unforgiving. The world don't know about good, love, kindness. That all's coming from a spirit because I used to be a ruthless joker. I used to live on the other side. I know. I know. So, <laughs> hey, and then this is what I used to tell them right here. They used to say right here, well, I don't know, Saj, you know, I think you're wrong. Hey, you know what? I used to hit them with this right here, family. I used to say this right here. You know what? I just might be wrong. But what if I'm right? You see, the way I see it, it's a win-win situation. Because if this whole thing about God is true, because I decided to live a life for the good, to help people, to be kind to people, to respect people. If I die and there's no God, I'm just dead. Okay, no problem. But if I die and there is a God, woe to the man who didn't believe. Now my thing is now, I'm in a win-win situation. And my thought on this whole thing about God is not fear of heaven or hell, not at all. 
your heaven and hell is going to be right here. But the spirit that you reign in is the very spirit that will be judged. Take it however which way you want. Hey, and I asked too, folks, I know, I know we have our Swahili people on here. This is, I, I'm speaking English. Uh, I don't use Swahili on my channel uh, because I speak English. And so I ask out of respect, if you're going to converse with others, hey, you're going to have to speak the English. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what all you might be, you know, you might be one of them non-believers out there too as well. And you appear talking behind my back. I don't know, but this channel is in English, okay? So with much respect for me and the others that are on this channel, please speak in our so-called language tongue of English, all right? Now, if you got a Swahili channel, please invite me over because I'm trying my best to learn all the Swahili. And so, yeah, family, so my thing to them, and when I always mention that to them, you don't have to believe, dude. You, you think it's all rubbish? You think it's garbage? And you think it's all that right there? You know? Well, you know what? Uh, will you, well, will you smoke bud? Hey, man, no need to explain. No need to explain, you know? No, I mean, I, I feel you. You're saying nobody, nobody stands in between you and God. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You, you said what you had to say. All right. It is all God. The spirit of God. Yeshua. Yeah, it's, it's, it's God. Yeah. What people get a hang up on. Let me say this right here. No man can get to the Father but by me. Now, people get a hang up on that because Yeshua said that. The Spirit of God said that. You keep hearing me saying that, Will. The Spirit of God said that. What? It's an entity of. You cannot. You can't get into the kingdom unless you receive what is of the Father. And I don't even like to use the word Father. That, that comes from a European but I get it. You can't, you, you can't get in or get to the Lord unless you receive the very spirit that is given. And that spirit that is given is going to be the spirit, what was shared, as Jesus or Yeshua Yahweh had said. The spirit of God said, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you the spirit of truth. It all comes. Send. Send means came from. Out of. Yes, I get it. People have twisted this whole mindset of Jesus on a physical plane. As a physical entity. When it's a spiritual entity. You know, this, this, this is, you know, the spirit of God said to his disciples because they were stuck on the physical plane. They couldn't understand. They couldn't get what he was saying to them. Yo, this ain't what I'm saying and what I'm doing ain't me. It's coming from. And what is what I'm come, speaking out of came from. So then that this is what I'm telling. They could not wrap their heads around it. That's why today we have people arguing. Is Jesus really God? Is Jesus because they're stuck on the physical body that the Europeans planted in your head? But what about the individual in the flesh? You say. Who was that individual in the flesh? It was prophesied his name was going to be Emmanuel. But then when Joseph and Mary was told him by the Holy Spirit that you should call him Yeshua. Because Emmanuel means God with us. Yeshua means salvation. The Spirit speaks is going to set people free. He who has an ear, let him hear. And the mission of, of, of Jesus 
was, was a pointer, pointing people back to God. Jesus said himself, you don't have to believe in me, but believe in the works that I do. For those will, all, look, listen to this right here. All will be forgiven. Except for those who blaspheme the spirit. You ain't got to believe in Jesus, the individual, if you want to look at the Jesus the individual. Believe in the works that are done. That means the actions, the words that are saying are coming is spiritual. This is what you, if you're going to blaspheme it, then you shall be, as it said, uh, you then, if you blaspheme, that is unforgiven. And it also says that every idle word that you spoke shall be judged. I mean, and that just means that everything you talk should be measured to the level of our creator. It's going to be brought to and be measured. It's looked at, measured. Is this, is this, this, all these words we be talking, all the things, ideals and all that right there. You need to measure. Is this of the kingdom or is it not? Or is it just to me? All right, so good. We dropped in numbers. So, there, I mean, there are people who are still on board who's feeling or are or, or learning or can vibe or uh, agree with, what have you. Um, those who may not, it might not be for them. It might not be ready right now. It's all good. It's all good. Can we say, see the good works being done? Yeah, you can. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I had it in the background. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Nah, it's not bedtime. It's, it's only 9 o'clock. What, 9.30? No, it's uh, 10 something right now in the morning. <laughs> Happy kids, you all. These are happy kids. Let's see what this young this young girl gonna do right here. <laughs> Not much room, but kids kids will find room for anything, boy. They will find room for anything. <laughs> I think we got the old uh, the commentator underneath there up there <laughs> Boko. yeah so yeah let me see what y'all saying um Go Black, take please, please take a picture of the kids by the new picture and give it to the school. Yeah, we could do that. I don't know if this van moves or not, but we'll get them to sit on this van or something like that. <laughs> I like you, just not this combo. That's okay. That's okay. Appreciate you for remaining, uh, you know, keeping your silence though. Beautiful for them to see their own image, yes. Yes, this definitely was the spirit that moved on, on me, yeah. To uh, have this done. Thank you for promoting us, our kids that look like the kids who are actually there. You better believe it. Yeah, he freehanded it all.
Yeah. All right, family. Well, like he's doing the finishing touches. And um, I will be coming back to you all here with some further updates when it comes to the project uh, repairing these uh, ceilings and making sure that work is going to be completed. I will put in the description um, for those who want to donate directly, um, you will have that information. Those who want to go ahead and put their donations to me to ensure that the money is going directly to that project of the ceiling, um, you can go ahead and send that a cash app there. And um, yeah, we just go from there, family. All right. Quaheri. But die later. All right, y'all. Y'all have a beautiful day, beautiful evening. Or I know some of y'all is mid midnight, so hey, I'll be talking with y'all later. Much 